Hello everyone, welcome to the last part of environmental communication. Today, we will talk about our last topic which is environmental communication activities. There are few topics that we will talk about which are planning an environmental communication activity, selecting its content, approaches and tools, performing an environmental communication activity, evaluating environmental communication, and conducting management review and planning revision. Is planning an environmental communication activity? Usually, organizations will take a range of environmental communication activities to implement their environmental communication policy. So, specific environmental communication activity should be developed by considering the environmental issue, geographic boundaries, and interested parties. Next, a situational analysis must be done to identify issues and organizations must consider which are the existing environmental communication activities and commitments, identify and understand issues concerned to interested parties, the expectation and perception of the interested parties about the organization, the environmental awareness of interested parties, finding the most effective proven communication media and activities in communicating with interested parties in similar situation, identify the leader's opinion and their influence on issues related to environmental communication, public image of the organization on a specific issue, the latest in development and trends on environmental issues, economic and financial implication, and finally, knowledge and understanding of the values and culture of interested party. It is also important to consider the potential costs and consequences of not communicating which cause more than environmental communication in the long run and also impose other costs on an organization like damaged organization reputation. Next, under planning and environmental communication activity is setting environmental communication targets. Under this, the organization must decide what needs to be achieved in environmental communication activity. Be consistent with the objective that are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-related. Evaluate the activity implement whether the target meets or not. The objective of doing this is to improve environmental performance across the supply chains by communicating organizational goals like reaching 85% of raw materials suppliers and 65% of suppliers of consumption items. Track how supply chains improve environmental performance through questionnaire return from 100% of raw material suppliers and 85% of suppliers of consumption items, for example. Share the improvement information by provide conclusions to allow change in procurement procedures by given that. Next, will be identifying target groups where identification is among its interested party and from here different and often confliction demands from target needs to be addressed and respond to. Next, under the same topic, 
will be defining geographic scope. What should be defined is the areas or location on which it will focus its environmental communication activities. Different languages, culture, and habits may affect public needs and perception about the organization. Involvement in addressing a specific environmental issues on more than one geographic scale. Identifying environmental information is the last under the same topic of planning environmental communication activity. Under here, the organization should anticipate environmental issues of concern to interested parties, be based on the targets, appropriate quantitative and qualitative data, and information can be selected or generated. Prepare written materials or other types of communication in a form that is clear and appropriate for the relevant target groups. Other than that are information and strategies and the environmental implication, environmental policies, management practices and performance measure, environmental management system, list of environmental aspects and impacts of activities, products and services, data and other documentation, use for environmental labels and declaration, and lastly is life cycle assessment of products and activities. We will now talk about the next topic which is selecting environmental communication content, approaches and tools. Under this topic, organizations should adjust the information based on initial planning and target groups. So the information should be behavioral aspects and the social, cultural, educational, economic and political interests of target groups. Use appropriate language, make use of visual image or electronic media where appropriate. Be consistent with the selected approach and where relevant with other information on environmental issues. The communication approaches and tools are divided into three. Written communication approaches and tools, verbal communication approaches and tools, and other communication approaches and tools. These are the example of approaches and tools. For written communication approaches and tools, we have letters, written materials like brochures and others. verbal and other communication approaches like public meetings, workshops, open houses, surveys, and others. In this slide, for example, the communication approaches and tools are through cooperative projects, sustainability agreement, and even an art exhibition can become one of the approaches of environmental communication. Under the same topic, responsibility and involvement, internal and external, are defined. This means that to be involved in the environmental communication processes, to become familiar with the environmental impacts of their strategies, planning, and others, as well as the requirement of the interested parties, taking a leading role in promoting an internal environmental that stipulates and acknowledge those who are actively involved with environmental communication, encourage regular communication to all employees on the initiatives and result of environmental communication. 
tags under the same topic of tracking inputs from interested parties. This is done to recall the history of specific interested party communication, inquiries, or concerns, to understand the nature of various interested party engagement over time, to improve organization's effectiveness in developing future communication and addressing the concerns of specific interested parties as needed. The second last part of this topic is planning for environmental communication activities on environmental crisis and emergency. This is done to make sure that the affected communities inform about measures taken and exposure risks. Residents and workers help problem be reduced, impact on the environment is reduced or avoided, authorities are keep informed. Such planning too can greatly reduce the consequences of undesired events on organization. The last part of the topic of selecting environmental communication content approaches and tools is collecting the evaluating data. In here, Material used in environmental communication should be documented so that it can be organized, maintained, and available for those interested in the information. The document management system should be able to provide fast access to information, especially in response to environmental crisis and emergency. Evaluating of the data should include checks for accuracy, consistency, reliability, and applicability. Now, on to our next topic which is conducting environmental communication activity. When communicating with target group, an organization should design those working for the organization or on its behalf to serve as spokespeople and media sources, provide spokespeople with speaker or media training before they undertake communication role, consider whether to use an independent third party or consultant to produce information that will be provided, actively promote and respond to input and feedback, try to provide advance notice of publication for review and consideration by interested parties, ensure that the timing of the communication is appropriate for its internal business cycles, external events, interested parties, availability and interest. Consider whether to use the facilitator or mediator. Avoid jargon, overly technical and inconsistent information. Under the same topic is recording the responding to feedback. When the communication has succeeded, there is still a need for the organization to obtain feedback from the different target groups and respond to show understanding, interest, and consideration of their view. If an organization communication activities have failed in any of these respects, a quick reaction is necessary. A failure in this may be remedies by providing clearer information through more direct access and discussion. In here, we will go to our second last topic, which is evaluating environmental communication where the activities will be evaluated based on its environmental communication policy, how principles of environmental communication applied, whether its objectives and targets achieved, 
the quality and appropriateness of the information provided to target groups and the activity, the way in which the communication was conducted, the responses of interested parties, whether the communication program gives effective and meaningful dialogue with the target groups, transparency of procedures and approach, whether the environmental communication address the needs of the target groups, whether target groups know that they were heard and were made aware of how their input is used, and finally, the target group's understandings of the purpose and content of the environmental communication. Finally, we will wrap up the with our last topic of environmental communication activity, which is conducting management review and planning revisions. Under this, assessing opportunities for improvement and the need for changes to the environmental communication should be reviewed, including the policy, strategy, and activities. In these two, the adequacy of resources provided for the environmental communication is assessed. The data collection process is then assessed. Lastly, the improvements necessary to the information provided to interested parties versus the communication process is distinguished. References Now, let's revise. So, what are the two types of communication approaches and tools required in environmental communication activities? Do you get it yet? The answer is written and verbal communication approach and tools. Thank you for taking the time to learn about environmental communication.